All right. Praise the Lord. Good to have everybody with us this morning. I'm glad to be with my family. Happy Mama's Day to Mama over there. Oh, Mother Teresa is here. And so we're grateful for that. Uh, she's been a mama to me for 26 years, helping out on youth trips and everything else. She's the mama of four. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <Wow. laughs> Amen. Praise God. Happy Mother's Day. It, today's a special day. To, uh, God is good to us. I don't know why they chose this date, but I know why they chose this date for now, for today. Because everything is meeting together today. And the Lord would gather you as a hen would gather her chicks. Like a mother hen would gather her chicks. It's all together. Today's the 75th anniversary of Israel. She turned 75 today on Mother's Day. And today is a day, a forgotten day. This is the triumphal entry day. This is the day Jesus rode in on the donkey and the world, the church, is oblivious to it. This is the real deal. This is the real day. This is something that needs to be acknowledged and much attention paid to it. And nobody is today. And Jesus has an awful lot to say about that. His heart, heart breaks. We're breaking our series today from the book of Corinthians. I was going to preach Corinthians today. And just at the last minute before we left house, the Lord said, no, nah, man, let's do this. So we're going to be in... Luke 19. Luke 19, verse 28. Uh, I like 27. This is Jesus. This is at the end of the tribulation. This is Jesus talking, 27. But those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them and be their king, you bring them here and I'm going to kill them. That is the day of the Lord when Jesus comes back. That's his verse. That is the end of the tribulation. That's what he was telling that story in right there. The parable of the pounds. And you folks who are not going to be saved now, you better pay attention and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ in the tribulation. When you see those two witnesses down there in Jerusalem preaching and crying out, you listen to what they say, you believe, and then this, these parables in Matthew are for you. You take everything that God blesses you with and you bless others, but we don't have much. God will take little and make it a lot in miracles and faith. And this is the time when there's going to be great, the Spirit of God being poured out upon all flesh. You're going to see miracle after miracle after miracle in this thing. And you follow the men of God and hear what they've got to say. And know that at the end of the tribulation, God is going to have an expectation to see your receipts, to see your paperwork, to see your books and the books were open, to see what you did while you lived these seven years. And that's what that parable is all about, the cities and the talents and all that jazz. And at the end of it all, those who did nothing with the salvation, the free gift of salvation, who did nothing, who didn't want Jesus to be their savior, nor their king, nor their Lord, nor anything, he's gonna come back and he's gonna kill you. And we encourage you on this side, guys, please, by the mercies of the living God be saved today. It's a free gift. Don't you understand how free and beautiful salvation is? It's a free gift. You have to do nothing. It's all been done. We just believe. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. That's what it takes for you to get saved. He's taking care of the sin issue. Now it's a righteousness issue, and that's based on your belief. If you don't believe, you have a wicked heart of unbelief, which is unrighteousness. But if you'll believe, God will transfer. He'll, he'll get rid of all the wickedness out of you that's been held against you, that was accounted unto you. It's already been paid for in Jesus Christ. But people who will not receive this free gift, God's going to throw it all back on you and make you suffer for your own sin. He's going to revoke the price tag that he paid for you. That's the shedding of his blood. That's the worst idea I can think of. Having had your eternity paid for in heaven, in glory, with Jesus, the angels, you being the bride of Christ and saying, nah, that sounds stupid. All my friends are going to hell and I'm going to go there too and we're going to have us a party. Or I don't believe in heaven and I don't believe in hell. Or I don't like God, that fairy in the sky. You're all fools who think like that. The fool hath said in his heart, no, God, no, 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 no. But the wise men have said yes. We have said yes to what? What the preacher was preaching, what the Bible says. Guys, true preachers of God preach the Bible. That, that's the word of God. A true man of God wants to get you the heart of God, and he wants to please God at the same time. 
He wants to please the Lord, getting you the word of the Lord the way the Lord said it in context. And there are so many who are not like that. They love the money. And we were going to talk about that in Corinthians today, and we might talk about it next week. Whatever the Lord leads, we're going with what the Lord leads, right? Today is Mother's Day. Praise God. And we honor the mothers. That was such a beautiful creation of God. When God created Eve, he saved her for last. Okay? And he made her from man, and she belongs to the side of man. She doesn't belong. He didn't make lesbians. He didn't make homosexuals. Didn't you heard, don't you remember that in the beginning, he made them male and female, and it was beautiful. And he put them together, and they belonged side by side. And the reproduction, oh man, that whole process, what a miracle. Is that a miracle or what? How it all works. You got two bodies, it seems, but that's two bodies become one body to form a third. <laughs> that's incredible. And Solomon said, man, I just, it blows my mind how a little bit of liquid becomes solid. Then all of a sudden bones start growing in a womb. That blows my mind. How in the world is a skull formed from two cells? How is a backbone? How is the nervous system developed? How is the eyeballs, the thyroid? How does all that happen inside a womb? It's a miracle. Thank you, mom, for the miracles. Thank you for going what you went through to get us here so we could be redeemed. This is the wonderful plan of the living God, man. Procreation and recreation. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful that we can be recreated and we can be saved and we can go from being a sinner to being one who's made righteous in the eyes of God? Aren't you thankful about that? God's awesome, man. And so why don't we look at our passage here today? This day is not only Mother's Day and the 75th anniversary of Israel. Now, guys, when they saw that happen in 1948, they knew God was up to something because Israel is the time clock. Okay? You got the, you got the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand. The hour hand was Israel becoming a nation. The second hand was in 67 when Jerusalem was gained back. And then the second hand will be the temple when they build that temple. And we know that that is a satanic lie, but it is still what we're watching for because Jesus Christ is going to come back and desecrate the one who desecrated that area. He's going to kill them. He's going to bring them forward to him. And he's going to walk right up in, in the middle of their war. Look at his clock. Y'all didn't know what time it was, did you? The Bible code tells us that, that Barack Obama and none of those people will have been expecting Jesus Christ when he shows up. He's going to walk up on the scene and, hey, you guys all ready to die? I'm, I'm here to kill you. I'm going to wipe you out, man. And he's going to use one word, destroy. And they're all going to be destroyed. And then he's going to say, oh, it's time to dance. And he's going to stomp on their corpses. And then after the end of all that, he'll say, amen. Bury these fools. And then he's going to go down on his 75-day cleansing spree and consecration spree. He's going to clean everything up, man. And it was always blood and water that caused things to be cleaned up and consecrated. And remember what flowed from his side on Calvary? The blood and the water. That was full consecration for those who will place their faith in what he did. His shed blood, his shed water. You don't hear that preached much. But that's because people don't know how to preach Leviticus the water ceremonies, the cleansing ceremonies, the taking care of the leprosy, which is sin in our lives. That was water, water ceremonies, water rituals. And Jesus Christ took care of the blood rituals and the water rituals right there on the cross. Aren't you thankful he did that for you? Our God is a good God. He's a blessed God. Today is also the day that the lamb was inspected on the first day of Nisan, the first day of the month was the 5th of May this year. Today happens to be the 10th day of Nisan, the 10th day of the first month. In Leviticus, we're told that on the 10th day of the first month, uh, well, on the 14th day of the first month will be the sacrificial lamb. Okay, will be uh, Passover, when Jesus Christ died, when the lamb was slain. And then they, they were told to bring in the lamb, choose the lamb on the 10th day of the month, make sure it's a perfect lamb, without spot or wrinkle, without blemishes, without cancer, without crossed eyes or a missing eye or a torn hoof or anything. It had to be blemish free. And when they saw that it was blemish free in the New Testament, the Greek speaking folks, they would say, ah, Tatelestai. That's a good one. It's finished. This, this is the one. 
And for four days, they would feed it. The family, the kids would play with it, bottle feed it, whatever, however young the, the lamb was. And then on day 14, they would slit its throat and offer it as sacrifice. And they would eat the meat of that lamb. And it was very important. So God gave the layout. He gave it, gave us the time frame when to do it. He gave us the calendar. And we have discovered, guys, guys, we have discovered that the calendar was off 43 to 45 days. Now we're on calendar. We're calling all of you to be part of this. We're calling you to get in time with God. God created the beautiful gift of time, the sun, moon, and stars. And he told us what time it is. And we have now learned that the new moon is not the crescent moon of the Muslims, of the Satanists, of the God of death. It is the full moon of Jesus Christ lighting the darkness. And we now know that that's the first day of the month, and that was May 5th of this year. Today is 10 days later on the 14th day of the month. It happens to be Mother's Day. It happens to be the 75th anniversary of Israel, and it's the day Jesus rode in on that donkey. Let's look at that, verse 28. After 27, he gives him that parable, I'm going to kill all the people who did nothing with my salvation. Verse 28. And when he had thus spoken, that's why we had to read that 27, because it's going right into verse 28. He preached the sermon and then he continued on with this. When he had thus spoken, he went before ascending to Jerusalem and it came to pass when he was very near to Bethage, Bethany. That's where Mary and Martha and Lazarus lived. He stopped in there all the time. That was a place of rest for him. They understood who he was and they gave, gave, gave of everything that they had to him. They fed him. They gave him bedding. They gave him a place to stay. They gave him a place to preach. They gave him a place of comfort and rest. They were in tune with the Lord and they loved talking about the Messiah to the Messiah. They loved talking about the kingdom of heaven to heaven's king. They loved it. They had enjoyed it. And they sat at his feet. And Mary really did. While the others were mostly into it and they believed the facts, they were still into the world a little bit, Martha especially. She was busy with the cares of this world and the cares of this world were choking out the word in her life. But Mary sat there believing. She sat at the feet of Jesus, would just listen to every word he said. And she'd ask him questions and he'd tell her more. And she would learn, 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 learn. And this was down here at Bethany where they lived. And Jesus comes by that way and he stopped by his friend's house for comfort on his way down to Jerusalem. <clears throat> Verse 28, we're in Luke 19, 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. Remember, er Jerusalem is up to everybody. Jerusalem was a high place. And so if you were even up north, you went up to Jerusalem. And if you were down south, you went up to Jerusalem. And he's coming in from Bethany and he went up to Jerusalem. He ascended to Jerusalem. Verse 29, and it came to pass when he was come near Bethage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. That was his other, that was his outdoor place of comfort. He spent his time at the Mount of Olives and he put a lot of focus. He put a lot of rifle aim on the Mount of Olives because that's where he's going to come back the next time for these Jews. And he wants these Jews to understand that you be looking to the Mount of Olives. That's where I'll be coming back. And we know that according to the Old Testament. And we know that according to the Bible code. Amen. You guys know those Bible codes. Learn those Bible codes. Uh, there's 420 of them published. 420 Bible lessons. We go through three or four a night as God leads us. There's some Bible lessons. They're hardcore. How many of y'all love the Bible lessons and the Bible codes? Great stuff, right? Each one. And we have a such a diversity, a variety. Uh, we'll, when we look at the next three, we'll have this subject and then space aliens and demons and seraphim and blah, blah, blah. And then Jesus is God. How many of y'all like that? I like it. I just like reading these verses in the Bible in the plain text. What, what do we see in verse 27? We see the end of the tribulation. And then now after Jesus teaches that truth about what he's going to do at the end of tribulation, the focus is at Bethany and the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is where uh, much, guys, I have a feeling that the olive branches, the olive trees are going to have things to do with the olive, the Mount of Olives when they get here. Very important to think about these things. Meditate on the things of God and let him swell those truths in your heart. Get out all the junk, all the stupid thoughts, all the stuff that doesn't matter and think, meditate on the things of God and let the Holy Spirit of God guide you and teach you in all truths because that's his job. That's what he said he will do. 
Verse 29, and it came to pass when he was come near Bethage and Bethany. See, guys, this is why is this important? Because this is the exact same place he ascended to heaven from. He ascended to Jerusalem one week before he rose from the dead. He walked with them for 40 days, and then he ascended to heaven from this very exact location. It's important to put those things together. Because he said, the way you've seen him go is the way you're going to see him return. So be looking there, you know, Bethage, Bethany, Mount of Olives, you know. Amen? At the mount called the Mount of Olives. And he sent two disciples, and he said to them, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye you shall find a colt. Now, in the, I think it's the Math, Matthew passage of this, it, it's going to find the colt and its baby. Mama's day. Right? You got a mama coat of a donkey. You got, you got the fold of a donkey, the baby. It's mama's day. The donkey. She was a mom. And that was very important to the Lord. You'll find the colt and the foal of a colt. Find, find an ass and a colt full of an ass. Donkey. Whereon never a man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. Okay? And if any man ask you, why are you loosing him? And him, him, him is the foal. You got, you got the mama and the foal. Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord has need of him. Now, guys, what kind of answer is that? Why are you stealing my donkey? Get off my ass. Why are you doing this? Lord has need of him. Something happened, didn't it? And boys, the Lord came to them in a dream. God warned them somehow. Might have been a year earlier, two years earlier, maybe 10 years earlier. And the guy was always wondering, I wonder what that means. I, I wonder what that means when a guy goes steal my donkey and I say, what you do? And he says, the Lord have need of him. And the angel of the Lord or whoever came to him in that dream said, when he says that, you let that thing go. He's been waiting. It might have been the night before. The Lord has need of him. Nobody would let their donkey be stolen by a bunch of guys who said, my boss wants him. Now, why are you stealing my donkey? My boss wants him. See ya. That don't happen. But it happened in this case. Why are you taking my donkey? Well, the Lord has need of him. Oh, they'll loose the colt and let him go, man. The Lord has need of him. Verse 32. And they that were sent went their way, and they found even as he said unto them. So here's Jesus telling them, hey, guys, I want you to go get a donkey. You're going to untie him. A guy's going to walk up to you and say, why are you taking my donkey? You just say the Lord has need of him. And so they said, okay, Lord, and they listened to his. Guys, is it important to listen to the Lord's voice? Is it important to listen to his instructions and do his instructions is Torah? That's the whole Bible. The whole Bible is instructions for you and I how to live and rightly divided will live it properly. God wants us to rightly divide the word of truth. The whole Bible is the word of truth, but not all of that truth is for me today. I don't have to take my uh, cow down to the temple. I don't have to take my sheep down to the temple and wait in line to have its blood slaughtered and then have to wait for them. You know, you got a crew who's going to go take the, the pelt and the bones and all that stuff outside the camp uh, while they're, you know, burning my stuff. Aren't you thankful we don't have to do any of that anymore? Aren't you thankful that Jesus was crucified outside the camp? Aren't you thankful for that blood and water flow, that uh, libation that he did for us, took care of, of, of the blood issue, the water issue, and we are cleansed and consecrated all because of Jesus, all because we have believed in that, we placed our faith in that? The Lord has need of them. Verse 32, and man, they went their way and found exactly like Jesus told it. Guys, it's always going to be exactly like Jesus told it. Get to know his word. 10 to 20 chapters a day. 10 to 20 chapters a day. 10 to 20 chapters a day. And it'll be just like Jesus said it. Listen to his voice. Learn. Learn to hear of him. Learn to recognize the Holy Spirit as he speaks to you. Verse 33. And as they were going about being obedient, loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said unto him, the Lord has need of him. Hey guys, quote the Lord. Say his word. Don't change the subject. Don't flower it up. Don't say something different. The Lord said, when they ask you why you seal the colt, you say the Lord has need of him. They got there and found exactly the setting that God said. They start loosening the colt and the man walks out just like Jesus said he would and said, what are you going to do with the colt? Why are you taking the colt? And you say the Lord has need of him. And they did it exactly like they said. It'll always do you best to obey the word, stay in context and do what the Lord says. The Lord has need of him, verse 35. 
And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way, and when he was come near, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Now, guys, there were some disciples of the Lord who loved him, and there were people all around him, the religious crowd, who did not love him. Okay, And these people were the people that loved him. Remember, there was a whole contingent of folks from Galilee, and they were all come into town for Passover. Okay, This Passover thing was a big event. Now, this is uh, just the beginning of Passover week. Four days from then is when Passover would have officially started. Then 15th day is unleavened bread. Everybody from all over Israel, all the men were required to come. And the women and the children who could come did too. Now, on the Feast of Tabernacles, every seven years, everybody was required to come because the law was going to be read and they were going to hear from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy and hear it all read. And they would rejoice and be so glad in the word of God. Right, church? We love the word. We love Deuteronomy, don't we? How about that Leviticus? That's what I'm in the middle of right now, Leviticus. It's tough to understand, guys. It's tough to understand until you understand it. And then it's a blessing once you understand it. And you don't understand it all the way. The Lord just keeps teaching you things. It's a blessing. 10 to 20 chapters a day, we encourage you. And then open up. Bondo always puts up the link for the Bible Codes Unsealed book. Get that book downloaded, guys. D don't just hear me say it. Will you please do it? Will you please hear the word of the Lord saying, loosen the colt. And when the guy asks you something, just tell him what I told you. Will you please hear Jesus saying you need the Bible code in your life? How many of y'all need the Bible code in your life? I do. How many of y'all have been straightened out and blessed by that Bible code? Over and over and over, right? All right. Verse 36, we're in Luke 19, 36. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he, come, when he was come near, and now he's going down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for the mighty works which they had seen. Four days later was going to really trip these folks out. And none of these disciples were men that were there four days later. It was only the women. And then one, the youngest one in the whole gang, John, he shows back up. And he's right there while Jesus is dying. And Jesus was able to share his last words with John. You know, almost like the book of Revelation. The last words of Jesus were shared with John there, there too. Look, behold the mama. Take, take care of Mary, mama. Mother's Day, the 14th day of the month. Today happens to be the 14th day of Greg's month. He says, Mama, it's Mother's Day. Jesus was honoring his mother by taking care of her. Apparently, Joseph, we believe Joseph was much older than she. He was probably 40-ish, 45-ish when she was 14-ish when they got married. Nothing weird and freaky about that. It's become weird and freaky in our generation because we've told you how to live and how to think and how to be and what to do and what's cool and you got to look good together and all this stuff. God's choice for Mary was Joseph. How many of y'all believe that? How many of y'all believe that God's choice for Joseph was Mary? How many of y'all believe that he was poor because they couldn't afford a sheep? They couldn't afford a lamb sacrifice. They took down what? Turtle, turtle dove. And that was who took, who took, took down the turtle doves to be? Sacrifice the poor. They were poor men, and that's why he had to save all his money up for a dowry. He was 40 years of age. He got his business going. He wasn't making tons of money at it. Because, guys, with those hand tools, it took a little while to make a yoke. With those hand tools, it took a little while to chisel out stone and build synagogues. With those hand tools. And to make his money, he earnestly saved and saved and saved for a dowry. And God put Joseph with Mary and Mary with Joseph and they were excited and blessed. And they had that one year of wait before they came together as a physical union, but they were legally married. They were espoused. It was a legal contract, a legal marriage, but they didn't consummate that marriage for one year, proving their faith to each other, proving their uh, faith to the Lord their integrity, showing what kind of character they had in their spaciousness, their, their being apart from each other as, as being married at the same time. And God's perfect choice on them was that. So Joseph had died earlier, and we know that according to our early writers. 
Joseph had died by the time Jesus was on the cross. If Joseph was 40, he was then 73 when Jesus died. If he was 45, add five years to that, 78. Okay, so he had died, and that's why Jesus, on what we would look at as Mother's Day, the 14th day of our month, he was there on the 14th day of his month while he lay a dying, took care of his mama, thought of his mama, was interested in his mama, wanted her taken care of, and he chose the best guy in the group, the guy who three days later would look into the tomb and believe. He had a little believer among his midst. He knew that in three days, he would be telling this young guy, John, who the betrayer was. This guy was always close to him. This guy loved Jesus. This guy was near to Jesus. And he knew this guy well enough to say, I need you to take care of my mama. Because my brothers are sorry. Jude, James, those guys, they won't do it. They don't even believe me. They are atheist. They are agnostic. They say they believe in Jehovah, but... If you've not believed in me, you've not believed in Jehovah, Jesus said. He that seems me, seen the Father, and his own household didn't believe. But he had one there, John, we believe was his cousin. Their mothers were sisters. He said, I need you to take care of my mama, because God loves the mamas, and mamas need care of, and God takes care of every one of you. Aren't you mamas thankful that God has taken care of you this far? All along the way, even when we didn't have the perfect playbook, how to be the best mama, God got us there, and he taught us because he's the best daddy. And he had patience with us and taught us and learned us, man, and, and took care of us. And he said, John, I need you to take care of my mom. And that was some of the last words he spoke before he died, before he gave up the ghost. And because John was there in Jesus' darkest hour, remember that three-hour eclipse? That's a dark hour. Remember Jesus in the middle of that darkness being judged by the Father for your sin? The sin that you came against God with, God, instead of judging you for that, which he should have, he judged the son because all the sin was placed on him. Jesus never came against the father, but you did. And God came against your sin and it was rifled out on Jesus and he died in your place. And at his last moments, he was taking care of his mama from the cross on the 14th day of his month. And God lined it up to be the 14th day of our month. On what day? The day of the 75th anniversary of Israel. God's taking care of them. And the day that Jesus rode in on that donkey this is the real date. Will you get that, please? Will you get that? If you will get that teaching, that understanding, that'll bless your heart for this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow, and the rest of the days until the rapture. Because this has everything for us to do with our day counts. This has everything to do with our belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ and the glory and the fact that he straightened out our calendar. And now, at this very moment, we are in time with heaven for the first time in millennia. Do you thank God for that? Do you thank God for that wonderful blessing, that value that is found in that truth? Those nuggets? We are in time with the Lord. We now know what time it is. I pray you do. Today is the day Jesus rode in on Palm Sunday on that donkey. And we're going through that story here in Luke 19. And these people in verse 37, they were rejoicing and praised God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen in Jesus Christ, in God. Verse 38, saying, Oh, blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They recognized what time it was, his disciples did. Because when you're hanging close to Jesus, you'll listen to his voice. And those who hear his voice know what he's up to. Verse 39, remember, guys, where's he coming from? Bethany area from the Mount of Olives, da, da 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 And when did we hear glory to God in the highest the first time? When he was born. And the people, we understand he was God in the womb. He was God in that manger. He was God as that little toddler. He was God in Egypt. He was God in Nazareth. He was God when he was astounding the men down there at the temple. He was God, he's always been God. And right here at the very end, what happened up front, because God is consistent, the angels brought the truth to us the first time and the people got it the last time, 33 and a half years later. And they sang with the angels, glory to God in the highest. Do you sing that about Jesus Christ? Is he your glory? Is he your story? Is he your everything? Is he your preeminent one? Does everything else in this world, has it faded away? Is it gone? Is it worthless? And all you do is do all to the glory of God. 
Glory to God in the highest. I hope this is the song of your life. I hope this song, whether you sing the words or not, is exemplary in your life. That you only bring glory to God and the devils of hell know it based on the wattage of your blowtorch, the light in you. And I hope people around you know it too. Verse 38, Luke 19, 38 saying, Blessed is the king that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the book of Psalms and they're repeating it and they're singing a psalm, guys. They ain't going out there and singing that new uh, Christian stuff. They're singing the Bible. Do you hear that? They're singing the Bible. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Verse 39. Uh, some of the Pharisees, though, among the multitude, uh, they said, Master, re rebuke your disciples. They're singing a song from the book of Psalms that has to do with the Messiah. And they're singing that about you. Can you shut them up for us, please? Please, because... John said you were the disciple, or, or that you were the Messiah. You said that you were the Messiah. And now these people are saying it, and we're not convinced, and we really don't like that kind of preaching. The Bible code says you're the Messiah. We don't believe the Bible code. We don't believe the Bible codes from heaven. How can you be the Messiah if it says you're the Messiah? Because Jesus is the Messiah, and the Bible code is the Bible. The Word made flesh. You better believe what the Bible code says, and you better believe what Psalm says, and you better believe to whom it's all pointing, one Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Some of the Pharisees, verse 39, among the multitude said, Oh, Master, hey, Master, Lord, Lord, Teacher, Rabboni, hey, they hated Jesus, okay? But they came to him because the people loved Jesus and they were afraid to say anything because they were people pleasers. So they couldn't say anything to the people and tell them to shut up. So they looked at Jesus and say, hey, master, hey, friend, hey, personal uh, acquaintance of ours. Oh, we we reverence you. Oh, the reverence of Jesus. It's time for worship and praise in this house, said the Pharisees. Master, Lord, said the Pharisees, and he never was master nor Lord in their hearts and lives. That's what's going on in churches all over America and the world today. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Well, because we don't read your Bible. We don't know what you say. These people knew what God said and they were singing songs. I don't have any record that they had to whip out a scroll, a songbook of Psalms and read the words. They were singing this from their heart. They had memorized it. They knew it and they understand who he was. They understood who he was and he is the Lord. He's the great king. He's the master to the disciples, but the non-disciples still called him master. And you're only a disciple if you love the Bible. Jesus said that. You love me. You love me. You are my disciples indeed if you'll do what I say. Now, you don't have to do anything to be saved. You have to trust that Jesus did it all to get you saved. Death, burial, and resurrection. You believe, believe. And after that, it's time to grow in the things of the Lord. It's time to be a disciple. Become a disciple. Grow in your discipleship. And when you say master, it's because Jesus is really your master. He is your boss. You look to him for everything to tell you what to do. These people called him master and didn't care for one thing that he said didn't believe that he was God, was earlier, was going to stone him in John chapter 8 because he, being a man, declared himself to be God. You know, another place the King James is totally wrong is where they say, I am he. Now, what, what about the Messiah? He says, I am he. Do you know what the Aramaic says? It says, I am the Lord your God. That's a big difference than he and I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord. I am truly the master. You better get your Bibles right, guys. Hebrew in the Old Testament, Aramaic in the New, and the Bible codes are legit. Keep reading. And some of the Pharisees, verse 39, among the multitude said unto him, Master, the disciples, you're, why are you calling him master? I thought his disciples are the ones who call him master. Why are you calling him disciples and then say, you're disciples? Hypocrisy. I'm going to call you master, but you're not my master. But those who really are under you and they've made you their master, they're singing a song that they're not supposed to be singing about you. They're supposed to be singing it about somebody who ain't on the scene yet because we got way too much time left. I, I got to enjoy this world before the Messiah shows up. 
I, I got to do my thing. I got to make me some mun, hun. Matter of fact, we got this big thing going on down here the Passover weekend, and my boy's down there at the money changers making a ton of mun for me, son. And we can't have you, you know, have them talking about you as Messiah because you're going to kill my chi because we ain't preaching that down there at our church. Your disciples, master. You better not call Jesus master and Lord unless you're his true disciple, you hypocrite. God hates actors. God hates liars. And the church is filled with them today singing about Lord, Lord, and master, master. And many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy? And oh, didn't we do great things? And you saw us on TV. You saw what we were doing. You saw how much those people were given to us in faith, word of faith. You saw it. Master, please rebuke your disciples, verse 40. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these, my disciples, would hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Because this is my time. This is the time of the Father's appointment. This is the time that was set up on day four of creation with the sun, moon, and stars in their orbits, making dates, making hours, and making minutes and seconds, making months and years, making decades and centuries, that same time system is perfectly set and today is the day. Today is the day that Jesus is to be praised and truly be master and it's the day of the inspection of the Lamb and the church is missing in this day. Because they've gone with the pagans and Greg on the Gregorian calendar and they've totally missed, they don't want the truth. You know who would know what I'm preaching right now? Those who want to know it. Lord, I want to know the truth. I, I want that which is in heaven to truly be on earth. Remember the Lord's Prayer? Lord, let it be so on earth as it is in heaven. These people don't really mean that. They pray it. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, what? Did you read 10 to 20 chapters a day? Do you really care about the daily bread? You liars, you hypocrites. Oh, he's my master. You liar and hypocrites. You'll be killing him here in about, you know, four days. And you kill him every step that you take. It was the sin of us that killed him. Quit living in that sin. Quit being a hypocrite. Quit calling Jesus master if you are not willing to read the Bible. He is not your master, dude. He can be your savior. Now, now we're not going to come against that. Everybody who believes he's your savior, but everybody who believes he's not their Lord and master. And don't you dare call him that if you ain't reading your Bible and doing what he says. You're a liar and you better listen to the preacher. This is the voice of God talking to you today. Amen. Don't call him master if he ain't your master. Don't call him master if you don't care about his instructions and his word. He's not your master, dude. You're deceived, masterfully deceived. Verse 39, some of the Pharisees among the multitude said unto him, Master, will you please rebuke thy, they're your disciples, master. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these would hold their peace, the stones would cry out. All of creation would cry out right now because creation knows who I am, the creator. Except those of you with a free will, you made up your own choice to believe in evolution and to say no to God. Only fools will say no to God. Verse 41, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and he began to cry and cry and cry and cry over Jerusalem because he came to save Jerusalem. His heart was broken over his town. Is your heart broken over your town? I'm gonna to tell you this, if your heart is not broken over your town, Jesus is not your master and you have not fallen in line with his faith frequency, which is his word and the Holy Spirit leading you in all things godly and truth. You're a liar if you don't have tears in your eyes and a burden for your city. Because that's the way of the master. The way of the master is he had a burden in his heart for the city. He came to save them. And here he is on this little donkey riding in and he cries and cries. And what did he say while he was praying or he was talking to the city? He said, if you had known even thou at least this thy day, what day it is, guys, Today is Palm Sunday. If you would have at least known the truth that today is the real Palm Sunday, what does Jesus go on to say? Luke 19, 42. If you had known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes because you have believed Satan's lies. You believe the Vatican's lies. You believe television 
You believed every other script, your stupid pastor who went to seminary. You believe what he has to say over what God has said truly in his word in context. Now they're hid from your eyes. Listen to this, guys, 43. Luke 19, 43, for the days shall come upon you that your enemies shall cast a trench around you. The Russians, guys, are about to cast a trench around you. Trench means water, a moat, that which you can't cross, that which you can't survive. Because you didn't know today was the day of Palm Sunday and the day Jesus rode in, you were more interested in the 75th anniversary of Israel who hates God and defies him. You were more interested in Mother's Day, and most of you mothers are going straight to hell because you won't believe in Jesus Christ. That's your default. As good as a mama is, she's still a rotten thing in the eyes of God if she's not saved. And the emphasis is all placed on the wrong stuff today when it should be placed on the lamb who's riding in on a colt and he's crying over your city, New York. And he's crying over your city, Jonesboro, Arkansas. And he's crying over your city, Nashville. And he's crying over your city, L.A. And he's crying over your city, Seattle. And he's crying over your city, Los Angeles. But you don't care about his cries. You don't care anything about what he says or his emotions or what he feels about anything. You're more important. And what's more important to you is your feelings and your understanding of things. And you're going to your shrink and your shrink telling you how to think and how to be and how to overcome, you know, without Jesus. You're more interested in popping your pills and going to the sorcerer, the magician, you know, like Saul did. Hey, witch, can you fix me up? I need some help, man, because that fruit of the spirit thing is taking way too long. And I call him master, but he's not my master. I, I'd rather the pharmacist be my master. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to please help me out. And people are more interested in all of that than Jesus crying over your town. And he says, because you don't know today. Listen to me, guys. This happened on this very day that we're talking of. This is the very day. And because you didn't know what day it was today, your enemies are going to build a trench around you that you will not escape from. Keep reading the list of five things that's going to happen because you didn't recognize the real Palm Sunday when it showed up in your face. And you didn't recognize the real master, though you called him master in your church and your singing songs of Bethel and all those talked about master and Lord and he wasn't your Lord. If you ain't reading his Bible and doing what his Bible says, he is not your Lord. He is not your master. Because you didn't recognize and these things are hidden from your eyes, verse 43, for the days shall come upon you that your enemies will cast a trench about you. How many of y'all believe the Russians are going to destroy the United States of America? Okay, because the Bible code told us so exactly how it's going to happen. They're going to build a trench of submarines around us. They're going to Cast a trench around you and encircle you. That's number two, roundabout. Does that sound like in line with the Bible code? And for those of us that know what day it is, do we believe that? And they're going to encircle you and keep you on every side. You'll not be able to escape this one. Does that sound really familiar? Verse 44, ooh, Obama, circle that. This is going to be Obama doing all this, guys. Obama is the one who's making this all happen. And you're going to lay on the ground and your children with you. Praise God, this is not going to be true with us here. Amen? This happened in AD 70. This part here, the children will be raptured. Aren't you thankful for that? Only these people, the ones who have sinned against the Lord, those who are not righteous in the eyes of God. And we saw in the Bible code that all the little ones are righteous in the eyes of God. And we think that age might be around 13, 14. Okay? Because, here's why. In Israel the age was 19 because they didn't have television and radio and influence from outside. You and I have tons of influence and radio making us much more wicked earlier in our lives and less innocent at the age that Israel was considered. 13, 14, you'll know all you people who are left behind and won't be raptured, you'll know. Ask, ask the nearest teenager next to you how old he is. And everybody younger than that will be missing. That'll be the youngest child on planet Earth, real human. Now, there'll be a bunch of little black-eyed children around made in laboratories. A bunch of devil seed children. There'll be a bunch of those here. But the ones that are missing are going to be the humans who could have been saved and salvaged and were saved and salvaged and made innocent in the eyes of our God. Aren't you thankful for that? 
And you're going to look around and you're going to see a generation, nobody under the age of 14. They'll all be a missing. And Jesus said, and that's going to happen. And you're going to be the ones left here recognizing that because you didn't recognize what day it was today. And the same, guys, does God work in a pattern? Does he work in a pattern? In AD 70, this was true. He was about to be killed in four days from this very statement. And because you didn't recognize what day it is, Jerusalem will not believe. And he's crying over his city. He's crying over his town. Are you crying over New York City? Are you crying over those towns? Please, please be saved today. Please be saved today. Lord God, save these people. If there's somebody who will be saved, please save them before you destroy them. And because you didn't know this day, your enemies are going to surround you. They're going to build a trench around you, a trench of nuclear bombs. You're not going to be able to escape, and you're going to lie down dead and your children with you, except the children with you part. Aren't you thankful you know what time it is? Aren't you thankful you know what day it is today? And here we are. That is today, guys. Know where Jesus is. For the days shall come upon thee that your enemies will cast a trench around you, and guys, this is going to happen to everybody. America is the template. What you unbelievers see happen to America is coming your way next, and you better recognize what day it is. You better know what time it is. You better believe on that side. If you won't believe on this side, guys, we're just handing you a free gift. Will you please receive it? Will you please believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ? Verse 44, And shall lay thee even with the ground and your children with you, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. This is Obama, guys. Obama, he, the devil, did this through Titus in uh, Jerusalem in AD 70, and it was God doing it. It was God's judgment using these men, the Romans, to do it. And now we have the Roman Empire died, right? It looked like it died, but now it's resurrected in this Obama in the United Nations. The eighth king is of the seven. Because you did not know the time of my visitation. The first visitation was Jesus Christ coming as an innocent lamb. The second visitation will be his becoming, uh, coming to us as a lion ready to destroy. And the entire church world doesn't even know what time it is. We're encouraging you to be not part of that bunch, part of Laodicea. We're encouraging you to be part of the church crowd of Philadelphia, who's a small crowd. Who, who, who is Philadelphia? What is that? Of the seven churches in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and 3, Smyrna is the ones who die for Jesus, and they are blessed. There's nothing negative said about them. And Philadelphia are the ones who live for Jesus. And God promises them the rapture because they are truly saved. They are missional. They have a heart for God, and they believe his word. I pray that you, I pray you know what time it is. I pray you're in the right, right church. I pray you're in the right church congregation. I pray you are the right saint. I pray you're saved. I pray you're going to be saved from all this. But those that don't know what time it is today, there's going to be a bunch of them missing it. All Think of all the people who talk about Jesus around you who are not saved. The Catholics, one point something billion. The Mormons, the Church of Christ, the Church of God in Christ, the Church of the Nazarene. All these guys believe they're called the Church of the Nazarene and don't believe in the Jesus of Nazareth. I mean, how more pathetic can it get? They are part of the Azusa lie, the charismatic crazies who believe in experience over believing in truth. And God is the truth. He didn't say, I am the way, I'm the experience and the life. People hear that. That's what they hear. Oh, he's the life of the party. Jesus is the life of the party. Let's go party. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth. And the only place truth is found is in Scripture. And if you're not in scripture, you're not in truth. And you're missing out on some truths of what time it is. And thank God for the Bible code that told us what time it is. And today we have our calendar corrected. And today, based on what we know and where the moon is and what constellation it's in, today is the 10th day of the first month, the lamb selection day. Have you selected the lamb? Have you chosen the sacrifice of Jesus Christ over the one who didn't know what time it is, they're going to be their own sacrifice. They're going to be the ones who are entrenched. They're going to be the ones who are encircled. And they, guys, and the thing about it is, is they won't even know it because all this is taking place under the ocean, you know, where the beast of the sea dwells. They're under the ocean. It's all quiet. And people think it's going to be great. And when God calls out the saints, he releases the handcuffs. He opens the prison bars for all these devils to be able to hit the buttons and do their thing. 
and the people are going to be taken out before they even know they're taken out. And those who survive till the morning are going to be most shocked, freaked, and miserable when all the children are missing. And it wasn't the aliens, it was Jesus who did this for you because you didn't know what time it was. This, we believe, earnestly, is the last 10th day of the first month ever before the rapture. This is it. Do you know what time it is? Thursday, Wednesday night, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Jerusalem time, which will be Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. our time. Jesus goes to the cross. Six hours later, he dies on the cross. Then they have to get him cleaned up so he can be the unleavened bread, death, burial, and resurrection. And he rises from the dead one week from today. And one week from today, we begin our count Amen. to Shabbat. You excited about that? Do you know what day it is? Jesus said, because you don't know what day it is, you and your family are going to be destroyed. I pray you'll know what time it is and be saved today. Quit playing games. Quit thinking you got a lot of time left. This is it. This is our final count up. Right after that, he went into the temple, 45, and he began to cast out them that sold thereon and turned his house into a place of merchandise. All you fake Christians, all you money, prosperity preachers, you're, you're in the tens of millions, hundred million of you worldwide. You're going to be stuck here and you're going to be entrenched. You're going to be surrounded and Jesus is coming after you. He's going to kill everybody. I pray that you'll finally call on the name of the Lord. You'll despise money. You'll hate money. You won't worship money any longer and you'll know what time it is. You'll know who Jesus is. And instead of saying master, he'll be your master. Because he's going to come in and his whole intention is to flip out in your church service, to flip your offering baskets, to flip your tables, to flip your animals, to flip your families, to flip this, or, you know, the six seal earthquake that flips everything. He's coming to flip folks. And I'm encouraging you to miss all that and be saved today and be raptured because it's going to get bad. and It's going to get worse from there. And then worse from there, all every day will get worse and worse and worse. And what do we see in the book of Revelation? A bunch of people who didn't believe on this side finally waking up and believing when Jesus fast-tracked everything and told you the truth and you finally believed, but you're still going to die. Praise God. You don't have to go through all the miseries of the seven years. You get to come to heaven with all of us and rejoice. And you'll be doing what? Holding palms in your hand, saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, there's our master. There's our great king singing the song of Moses, Sean, and the Lamb. You guys remember reading that in the Bible code? They're going to be singing the song of Sean and the Lamb because they will have believed the word of Sean, Moses, in the tribulation. And they who didn't have their palms on this side saying, Hosanna, blessed is he, they'll have them on that side because as soon as we have been raptured, as soon as turmoil has happened, as soon as the children go missing, a lot of them will wake up to the truth and they'll be killed, but they'll be having a celebration of Palm Sunday in heaven next year and the year after until we come back and the Lord sets up his kingdom on planet earth in the millennial kingdom, the 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ. He's going to show us all how it's done right. He's showing us how it's done right now in the word. Will you get into the word? Will you love the word? Will you embrace the word? And really, when you say master, may that be a truth from your heart that Jesus Christ is your master. He is your Lord. And you are doing what he says to do because you know what he says to do because you've read the Bible. We encourage you, 10 to 20 chapters a day, know the heart of God and live it out and let him be your master and Lord today. On this wonderful day of the 75th anniversary of Israel, Jesus is coming soon. On this wonderful Mother's Day, thank God for you mothers who are truly saved. Jesus is your master and Lord and you have trained your families well. The rest of you mothers, you need to get saved. We don't celebrate you today. Those of you that have said no to Jesus and won't tell your children about Jesus, we don't celebrate you. We celebrate the godly ones like Jesus celebrated his own mama while he lay a dying. We celebrate the fact that today is Palm Sunday. And we glorify in that and we wave our palms to the Lord. We give him our empty hands of worship, of surrender. And we say, you are our Lord. You are our master. And not they are your disciples, but I am your disciple. Teach me, show me, guide me, Lord. I'm willing to go. I want to go. I want to please you in all that I do. Amen? Let's pray.